Welcome to 6.7 um, Story Problems. That's what we want. So basically what we have here in this setup, this is important. You're going to set up a 90 degree right triangle. And these are your angle uh, variables. And then the lowercase letters are your side lengths. And the capital letters are the corners. Okay, so we're going to set this up on each problem. And then we're just going to go through... Um, uh, our SOHCAHTOA stuff. So get your calculators ready and your scientific calculators because you're probably going to need them. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, given the indicated parts of a triangle, ABC, with uh, lambda, I guess, is 90 degrees. That would be the 90 degree angle there. Find the exact values of the remaining parts. So a alpha is 30 and B is 20. So now we got to get the other parts. We use SOHCAHTOA. And we have 30 there, so that's a 30 degree um, angle on your unit circle. You should be able to know what those things are. So if I do, um, if I want to get A and I have B, that's my opposite leg and my adjacent leg, so that's tangent. So we're going to do the tangent of 30 degrees equals A over B. All right, multiply by 20. What is the tangent of 30? Tangent of 30 degrees is your Y leg over your uh, X leg. So the short leg over long leg, that's one over the square root of three, one half over square root of three over two. So this answer would be 20 over the square root of three. We multiply it out and we get 20 uh, square root of three over three for A. Okay, so right now we're just gonna leave this as 20 over the square root of three. And let's find out what C is. Uh, well, I guess we could do B, or Bravo. What is um, uh, alpha beta, I guess, beta, whatever we call it, okay? So this is going to be 60 degrees. So we were supposed to figure that out as well. So that's the easy one. So let's use uh, the alpha side again. And this time we'll do it in red. And we'll use everything we've been given. Try not to use the ones you've found. So let's not use that value. So we want C. That is our hypotenuse, and we'll use our adjacent leg. So adjacent and hypotenuse is going to be uh, cosine, so, so ka toa. So the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse C. Okay, so we multiply by C, and then we'll divide by the cosine. So C equals 20 over the cosine of 30. And what is the cosine at 30 degrees? The x value at 30 degrees is the long leg. So that's 20 over the square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so that would be 20 times 2 over the square root of 3, or 40 over the square root of 3. Okay, and what is that? You have to rationalize it. So 40 over the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 over square root of 3, and you get 40 square root of 3 over 3. All right, so those are your actual answers for A and C and uh uh, bravo. Okay, uh, beta, sorry. Okay, now uh, let's go on to number two and we'll go a little faster. So you're just using SOHCAHTOA, so you see if you can do this. So um, beta is 45 degrees, which means alpha is 45 degrees as well. Um, so now we can use either one of these. These are 45 degree angles and you know what the 45 degree angles are. B is 35. So I'll do A again. Um, the and we do A, so A is going to be um, uh, A over, this is the opposite leg over the adjacent leg, so tangent again. So the tangent of 45 degrees is equal to A over 35. Now the tangent of 45 degrees is 1, so that makes this really easy. So A is 35, which you should have known that in a 45-45 degree triangle, the legs are the same. And then to do C, you can do the Pythagorean Theorem, or you can just set up another, uh, let's do the sine. The sine of uh, 45 degrees is equal to the opposite leg, 35, over the hypotenuse, C. So multiply by C, and then divide, and you get 35 divided by whatever the sine of 45 is, which everybody knows that's the square root of 2 over 2. So that's 35 times 2 over the square root of 2, or 70 over the square root of 2. And you rationalize that. I'll put it up here. 70 over the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 over 2. And that's 70 square root of 2 over 2, or 35 square root of 2. That's C. Okay. 
All right, as far as the answers are concerned, they are to be in exact value form. So what I have um, here, so that's A, this is C in the first one, uh, A is that, and A, capital A is that, and C is this one up here. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to keep using our unit circle values until we can't anymore, and then you'll use your calculators. All right, let's get at it. So again, number three, um, we are at uh, 45 degrees here, which makes this 45 degrees, and A and B are the same. C is 30, so now how, how do we get A and B? So since they're the same, we can use our trig functions or you can use the Pythagorean theorem. I'm gonna use the trig functions and so should you because you're gonna get really good at them if you do. So if I want um, opposite over hypotenuse, that's sine. So the sine of 45 is equal to A over 30 or 30 times the square root of two over two. All right, so 30 square root of two over two is gonna be 15 square root of two. And that's both A and B because they're the same. All right, and now we go on. Number four, uh, alpha is uh, 60 degrees. C is six, okay? So again, B or um, beta is 30 degrees. So we're gonna use 60 because that's what we were given. Uh, opposite over hypotenuse. So that's gonna be the sine of 60 degrees equals A over six or six times Sine of 60, 60 degrees, the y value is square root of 3 over 2. And that's equal to A, or 3 square root of 3. That's A. Now, how do we get B? By doing the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. Again, using only what we've been given, not what we found. So that would be the cosine of 60 degrees equals B over 6, or 6 times the cosine of 60. The x value at 60 degrees is 1 half. So that answer is 3. So those are your values, plus the degree we found. Moving on. Number five, A equals five, B equals five. Okay, so since those are the same, that means these are 45 degrees. Okay, so we found those. Now to get C, again, I'm going to use trig functions. I'll use the opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 45 degrees is five over C, multiplied by C, and then divide by C, or divide by sine of 45. So 5 divided by the square root of 2 over 2, which is 5 times 2 over the square root of 2, or 10 over the square root of 2. We rationalize, and we get 10 square root of 2 over 2, or 5 square root of 2. That's C. And we have all those other values. Number 6, A is 4 square root of 3. C is 8, okay? So now we don't have alpha. So let's use the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. So we get the sine of alpha equals 4 square root of 3 over 8, which is the square root of 3 over 2. So where is the y value, the long leg? Well, the, that would be 60 degrees. So alpha is 60 degrees. You don't need a calculator because you guys are brilliant. If that's 60, then beta is 30. Number seven, B is 5 squared to 3. C is 10 squared to 3. Again, we don't know anything. So we're going to use our sine function. Um, you could go to beta and use cosine, do A over C. So let's just do sine of alpha is equal to 5 squared to 3 over 10 squared to 3, which is... 1 half. Where is the y value 1 half? At 30 degrees. And that means beta is 60 degrees. All right. And number 8, b is 7 square root of 2. c is 14. Again, I'm just going to use alpha as the adjacent leg and the hypotenuse. So the cosine of alpha is equal to 7 square root of 2 over 14, which is square root of 2 over 2. Okay. So where's the x value, square root of 2 over 2? That's 45 degrees. So alpha and beta are 45 degrees. Okay, well, what is A then? Well, A and B, if those are 45, then A and B are the same. So A is equal to 7 square root of 2. Number 9, Give the, given the indicated parts of the triangle ABC, 
approximate the remaining parts. So now we will use our calculator. So whenever it says approximate, that doesn't mean guess. It means get your calculator and you're going to round your answers. So alpha is 37 degrees. What's beta? So you take 90 minus 37. Why is it 90 and not 180? Because they all have 90, 90 degrees there. 180 minus 90 is 90 degrees left to be used between the two. So 90 minus 37 is 53. So that's 53 degrees. All right, so we got part of it. B is 24. Now let's solve for everything else. Let's start with alpha, and we'll use our adjacent leg and uh, to get our hypotenuse. So the sine, uh, excuse me, this would be cosine for adjacent leg. Cosine of 37 is equal to the adjacent leg over hypotenuse. Multiply by C, and then divide the 24 by the cosine of 37. So put that in your calculator, 24 divided by um, cosine of 37. And so this should be 30, all right? It doesn't say how far to go, so 30.1, I guess. And that makes sense. The numbers should should look like the other numbers or what they you think they should be. Now we'll use opposite and adjacent. So that's tangent. The tangent of 37 is equal to a over b, 24. So multiply by 24 and take 24 times uh, the tangent of 37, and you get 18.1. So a is 18.1. So lots of different answers there you're supposed to get. There's beta and then your c and your a that you had to get. Number 10, beta is 64 degrees in 20 minutes. So divide that by 60 to get your... Um, your decimal says 64 degrees, 60.3 degrees, 64.3 degrees, and the three is repeating, okay? So that is beta, so 64.33, all right? A is uh, 20.1, and we need everything else. So take 90 minus uh, the 64.3 repeating, and you get 25.6 repeating degrees. So I'm gonna use beta because that's what was given and I'll use the adjacent leg and the hypotenuse. So that's cosine again. The cosine of 64.3, okay, equals the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. All right, and so you multiply by C and then divide. So C is equal to 20.1 divided by uh, the cosine of 64.3 repeating. So 20, um, 20.1 divided by um, the cosine of 64.3 repeating, and that's 46. So C equals 46.4. All right, and then now we'll use uh, the adjacent leg and the opposite leg, so tangent. So let's do the tangent of 64.3 repeating equals the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. So we're going to take 20.1 times the tangent of 64.3 repeating, and we'll get 41.8. So there are all the values that you needed to get, okay? All right, so number 11, uh, convert the 51 by dividing by 60. So 51 divided by 60 is 0.85. So this is 71.85 degrees. Subtract that from uh, 90. So 90 minus 71.85 is 18.15 degrees. Okay, so we know B is 240. So now let's get A. So let's just use alpha and do opposite over adjacent. So we'll use the tangent of 18.15 equal to A over B. Okay, so we'll take 240 times the tangent of 18.15, um, yeah. So 240, uh, 240 times, hitting the wrong buttons on my calculator, 240 times uh, the tangent of 18.15 degrees, and that gives me a equal to 78.7. Okay, 
and now we got to do uh, C. So we will use the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So that's cosine. So the cosine of um, 18.15 is equal to the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse multiply both sides by C. So C is equal to 240 divided by whatever the cosine of 18.15 is. So 240 divided by the cosine of 18.15 and that's 252.6. Which makes sense, okay? Think about it. Okay, so now number 12. Uh, let's see here. Alpha is 31 and 10, so 10 divided by 60 is 0.16 repeating. So 31.16 repeating is alpha degrees. And so we take 90 minus 31.16666. And we get 58.83 repeating degrees. All right, so now let's get everything. Uh, A is 510. So we're going to do, um, let's do the opposite over hypotenuse. Let's get the hypotenuse. So sine of 31.16 repeating is equal to the opposite leg over the hypotenuse, multiply by C, and then divide. So 510 divided by the sine of 31.16 repeating. So 510 divided by um, the sine of 31.16 repeating, that's 985 985.5. Okay, makes sense. If A is 510, C is 985. Now to get B, we'll do opposite over adjacent. So tangent, the tangent of 31.16 repeating is equal to the opposite over the adjacent B multiplied by B, which means we're taking 510 divided by the tangent of 31.16 repeating. So 510 divided by tangent 31.16 repeating so b is 843.2 so there's all our values that we we're supposed to be getting moving on 13 a is 25 b is 45 you could use the pythagorean theorem to get c but let's go ahead and figure out what alpha is alpha if we use what we've been given the opposite and adjacent that's tangent of alpha is equal to the opposite over adjacent leg. So alpha is the inverse tangent of 25 over 45. So 25 divided by 45, and then we take, uh, depending on which calculator you have, you have to do the inverse tangent. Uh, let me see here. I guess it's 29.1 degrees. So take 90 minus that 29.1 and you get 60.9 degrees for beta and now we get c let's go ahead and do um, the opposite leg over the hypotenuse again that's the cosine or sine excuse me the sine of alpha is equal to 25 over c and alpha remember is 29.1 so multiply by C, and we're going to get 25 divided by the sine of 29.1. So uh, 25 divided by um, sine of that is equal to 51.4. So there's all your values we were supposed to be getting. All right, 14. A is 31. B is 9. So again, let's use tangent and get alpha. So the tangent of alpha is equal to 31 over 9. So alpha is the arc tangent or inverse tangent of 31 over 9. So um, that is going to be, hold on a second, 73.8 degrees. So that's alpha. So 90 minus that 
73.8, and you get 60, oops, 90 minus 73.8. 16.2, oops, 16.2 degrees. And to get C, let's do, we'll do cosine this time. So do the adjacent and um, hypotenuse. So the cosine of 73.8 degrees, that's alpha, is equal to the adjacent leg over hypotenuse. Multiply by C, and then we will get 9 divided by the cosine, 73.8. So 9 divided by um, the cosine of 73.8, and that is 32.3. So that's alpha and C and beta. All right, 15. C is 5.8. B is 2.1. Okay, so we have, if we do alpha again, that's adjacent and hypotenuse. So we're going to do the sine of alpha is equal to, uh, adjacent and hypotenuse would be cosine, sorry. Oops. So this should be cosine. Cosine of alpha is equal to the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. So alpha is the arc cosine of 2.1 divided by 5.8. So 2.1 divided by 5.8, and then you take the arc cosine of that. So 2. Point, oops, 2.1 divided by 5.8, and the arc cosine of that is 68.8 degrees. So 90 minus 68.8, and we get 21.2 degrees for beta. And now to get A, uh, we'll go ahead and use opposite over adjacent, so that's tangent. So the tangent of 68.8 is equal to A over 2.1. So multiply by 2.1 on both sides, and you'll get your answer for A. So 2.1 times uh, the tangent 68.8, and that gives us 5.4 for A. Those are all your values. Okay, number 16. C is 0.68. A is, oops, A is 0.42. So if we start with alpha, again, that's opposite over hypotenuse. That's the sine. So the sine of alpha is equal to 0.42 over 0.68. So alpha is the arc sine of 0.42 over 0.68. So um, we're going to take the arc sine of that, and we get 38.1 degrees for alpha. So 90 minus 31.8, and we get 58.2. So we get all these values here. So now to get B, we will go ahead and do opposite over adjacent. So that's tangent. Tangent of 38.1 is equal to 0.42 over B. Multiply both sides by B. So B is 0.42 divided by the tangent of 38.1. So 0.42 divided by the tangent 38.1 which gives us 0.54 that's B so there are all your answers that you need moving on to number 17 given the indicated parts of triangle ABC it's a 90 degree angle to express the third part in terms of the first two so we're going to solve for B and we need we're going to use alpha and uh, C, the hypotenuse. So those three pieces would be the adjacent leg and hypotenuse. So that's the cosine of alpha is equal to the adjacent leg over hypotenuse. So what we're doing is um, solving for B. That's what that means. All right, so if we solve for B, we multiply times C. So B is equal to C times the cosine of alpha. So we look at 18, we're solving for B. Now what pieces do we have? We want beta and the hypotenuse. 
So what are all of those? That's the opposite leg to beta and the hypotenuse. That would be the sine. So the sine of beta is equal to the opposite leg over the hypotenuse multiplied by C. So B is equal to C times the sine of beta. Okay, same thing here. Now we don't, we, we can put this up here again so you have it. That's alpha, that's A, this is beta, uh, this is A, B, and C, C, and little B is there. Um, now, we have A, beta, and B. So what positions are those? Opposite and adjacent, so that's tangent. Tangent of beta is equal to the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. We're supposed to solve for the adjacent leg. Multiply by both sides by A, and then we'll divide off the tangent of beta. So B over the tangent of beta is what A is equal to. 19, again, A, B, C. Across from A is little a, across from B is little b, and across from C is little c. And this is alpha, and this is beta. Okay, B, A, and alpha. So... That's opposite over adjacent. That's tangent. So the tangent of alpha is equal to A over B. And we're solving for A. So multiply by B. So A is equal to B times the tangent of alpha. 21, same thing. A, B, C, A, B, C, alpha, and beta. We have alpha, A, and hypotenuse. So that would be the opposite leg over the hypotenuse, that's sine. So the sine of alpha is equal to A over C. We're solving for C. Multiply by C and then divide off the sine. So C is equal to A divided by the sine of alpha. 22. Go ahead and set it up. Okay, we're solving for C. We have C. A and beta. So what is that? With from beta, you have the adjacent leg and the hypotenuse. So that'd be cosine of beta is equal to the adjacent leg over hypotenuse. We're solving for C, so multiply by C and then divide off the cosine. So C is equal to A over the cosine of beta. 23. So again, if we need it, So we have B in our problem, C, and A. Oh my. So we're going to write B um, in terms of A and C. Since we don't have any angles, we'll use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And we're solving for B. So we'll subtract A squared, C squared minus A squared, and then we'll take the square root. So B is equal to the square root of c squared minus a squared. It's not plus or minus because b is a distance and b has to be positive. Same thing on 24, a, alpha, b, beta, and little b, little a, big c, little c. So we have little c, little b, little a. Again, same thing, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And we're solving for c here, so c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. All right, and to whet your appetite, let's just look at number 25. A person flying a kite holds the string four feet above the ground. All right, so here's your person. This is four feet. There's the kite. Okay, so this is four feet here. The string of the kite is taut and makes an angle of 60 degrees with the ground. Approximate the height of the kite above level ground if 500 feet is, of string is pulled out. 500 feet of string, that's pretty, that's a lot of string. All right, so how high is the kite? All right, so we're going to get H. We're actually going to set H to be just, oops this little uh, section here. And then we'll add four to it when we're done. All right, so you have 60 degrees. What have you been given? The opposite leg is what we want. 
and we have the hypotenuse. So we've been given the degree, we're using the opposite leg and the hypotenuse. So that's sine. So the sine of 60 degrees is equal to h, h not b, over 500. Multiply by 500, and what is the sine of 60 degrees? So the sine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. It's a long leg. So that'd be 250 square root of 3 plus 4 feet. Don't forget that. So now we need to use our calculator. That's the exact answer, by the way. So we do 250 times uh, the square root of 3, and that gives us 433 plus 4, which is 437 feet. That's pretty high. Well, if you think about it, 60, degree, 60 degrees is pretty high. So really the picture should look like this. And if that's 500, you know, this is roughly 430. That makes a little sense. All right, that's a little teaser for what's to come. From a point 15 meters above level ground. So I've already gone through and placed um, what these should look like so you can understand uh, how to do the problems. So if that's 68, then alternate interior angles makes this 68 degrees. And now it wants to know the distance between the point on the ground and the object. All right, so this right here, which is your adjacent side to 68 degrees. And we have the uh, opposite leg, which is your uh, height here. The opposite leg is 15. So we are going to use opposite and adjacent, which is tangent. So we're going to say the tangent of 68 degrees is equal to the opposite leg, 15, over the adjacent leg, A, which we don't know. Okay, so you need your calculators out, so you're going to use uh, your um, scientific calculator in uh, degree mode, so make sure you're in degree mode. And you got to get A by itself, so we multiply by A, and then divide off the tangent of 68. Okay, so take 15 on your calculator, divide by the tangent of 68, and that should give you 6.06 uh, meters. Next. So the pilot's flying at 5,000 feet. Uh, he's 10 degrees from the runway as far as that is concerned. What's the distance from the airplane to the numbers? So it wants the hypotenuse here. Um, so uh, we need to figure that out. This is your uh, corner we're going from. So we have the opposite leg and the hypotenuse. That's sine. So the sine of 10 degrees is equal to the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. And now we solve for h. So we multiply by h and then divide. So 5,000 on your calculator divided by the sine of 10 degrees. So 5,000 divided by the sine of 10 degrees and that's 28,000. So we are at 28,794 uh, feet away from uh, the numbers on the runway. Radio antenna. A guy wire is attached to the top of a radio antenna to the point horizontal uh, to a point on the horizontal ground that is 40 meters away. Okay, and so we got to get uh, 20 minutes in terms of seconds. So 20 divided by uh, so, sorry minutes in terms of decimals. 20 divided by 60 is one third, so 0.3. So this is 58.3 repeating degrees. So now approximate the length of the wire. So we want C. So we have the adjacent leg and the hypotenuse. So that it would be the cosine of 58.3 equals the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. So multiply by C to get it by itself, and we get 40 divided by the cosine of 58.3 degrees. So take a calculator and figure out the cosine of 58.3 degrees and divide it. So we get 76.1 um, uh, meters. <clears throat> okay, so we use tangent because we've been we're starting at R. And we're going to use D and fifty, which is the adjacent leg, the opposite leg, and adjacent leg. So tangent of seventy-two point six. You had to convert the seventy-two forty to decimals, and we multiply by fifty on both sides. So on your cal calculator, you take uh, fifty times uh, the tangent of 72.6 and you get d to be 160 uh, these are meters all right so let's move on to the next step 
To measure the height eight of a cloud cover, a meteorology student directs a spotlight uh, vertically upward from the ground, from a point P on level ground, okay? That's D meters from the spotlight. The angle of elevation theta of the light image on the clouds is then measured. Look at the figure. Express H in terms of D and theta. All right, so let's just say we had numbers in these positions. What in this right triangle that we have here, what would you um, say your trig function is? You have the adjacent leg, the opposite leg. So you'd use uh, cosine. Uh, no, a tangent, I'm sorry, opposite and adjacent. So the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite leg H over the adjacent leg. So katoa. So it says it wants you to solve for H. That's what it means. So we're going to multiply by D, and there's your answer. H is equal to D times the tangent of theta. And now you can use this formula that you just came up with for part B. So that's the answer to A. Part B says approximate H if D, so D is 1,000 meters, okay, and theta is 59 degrees. So now since you've solved it for H, all you have to do is use a calculator. 1,000 times the tangent of 59 degrees. So that should be, the height should be 1,664.3 meters until you hit the base layer of the clouds. Altitude of a rocket. So a rocket is fired at sea level and climbs at a constant angle of 75 degrees through a distance of 10,000 feet. So that's how far it's actually gone. Approximate its altitude to the nearest foot. So what do we have? We have the opposite leg and the hypotenuse. That would be the sine of 75 degrees is equal to the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. Okay. So now you multiply by 10,000 on both sides and you get your altitude or H. So 10,000 times uh, the sine of 75 degrees. And that would be 9,659 uh, feet. Airplane takeoff. An airplane takes off at 10 degree angle and travels at the rate of 250 feet per second. So now we're going to have conversion, and we need to learn how to do this. Approximately how long does it take the airplane to reach an altitude of 15,000 feet? So this right here is the distance that it's traveling before it hits 15,000 feet. Okay, so if we know the distance and we know the rate, we can figure out how long it takes to get there. Okay. So using the DIRT uh, formula, we have to figure out D, which in this case is C in our picture. So we have the opposite leg, and we're wanting the hypotenuse. So that would be the sine opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of 10 degrees is equal to 15,000 opposite leg over the hypotenuse. Multiply by C, and now you divide by the sine of 10. So 15,000 divided by the sine of 10 degrees. So 15,000 on your calculator divided by the sine of 10, and we get the total distance is going to be 86,381 or 82 feet um, if we round up. Okay, so now that's your D. So we're going to put it in our formula. 86,382 is equal to our rate, 250 uh, feet, and this is feet here, per one second times the time. I don't know how long it takes, so this is how we do it. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. So one second over 250 feet times 86,382 feet. That equals our time. So units can be treated just like variables. Feet over feet is reduced to one. So now what do we have? 1 times 86 is going to be 86,382 seconds over 250. So now what is that? 86,381.55724 divided by 250. And that gives us 345.5 seconds. But that really doesn't tell a lot of us anything. So we're going to divide it by 60 to put it into minutes. Okay, because you have 1 minute is to 60 seconds. So if we multiply that ratio together, the seconds again act like units. They reduce out, leaving our new unit of measure of one minute. Okay, so 345.5 times 1 divided by 60.
So just take that answer, divide by 60, and get 5.76 minutes. And that's your answer in minutes. Just to help you out, what is that in miles per hour? So 5.76 minutes, if we want to change that to hours, we got to multiply by 1 hour is to 60 minutes. And we put the minutes on the bottom so that they would reduce out. So if we divide that number by 60, this is how many, um, uh, how much of an hour it takes to go. So you're 15,000 feet up in the air at 10 degrees. So that's 0 0.09597. So 0 0.1 hours. So a tenth of an hour uh, to get you to 15,000 feet. If you want to know how many miles per hour you're going, you just got to convert 250 feet over one second. And then we want to convert um, your 250 feet per one second. So we've got to get rid of seconds. So we need seconds on top and uh, minutes on the bottom. So, so the seconds will reduce out. So there's 60 seconds in one minute and then 60 minutes in one hour because we don't know how far we're going in miles per hour. So we've gotten our time in terms of hours. Now we need to change feet to miles. So we want feet to cancel, so we need 5,280 feet on the bottom so that the feet will cancel out, and that's equal to one mile. So this is how you do your conversions. So obviously this is not what this problem is, but I want you to see how fast <clears throat> this is uh, working here. So now you just multiply across 250 times 60 times 60 is equal to 900,000 miles per 5,280 hours. Okay, so now we divide it by 5,280 and we get 170.5 miles per one hour, miles per hour. So plane's going pretty fast. All right, 33, design a drawbridge. All right, so the only way to solve this type of problem, we see these right triangles here. We have two of the same right triangles, all right? The whole thing is 150, so when the drawbridge goes up, each of the hypotenuses are 75, half of the total length. So that helps us. So we need to find D and we need to find B for part B, all right? So in order to find D, we need H, because we can take H and add the 15 feet to it, and that will tell us what D is. So now we have this right triangle with all the numbers in the right place. So what do we need here? To get h, we're not going to use x. That's too many variables. So we'll use hypotenuse because we have that. So the opposite leg in hypotenuse would be the sine function. So we're going to do, mark a, would be the sine of 35 degrees is equal to the opposite leg. And we're going to call it y instead of h. h we'll use for hypotenuse. Uh, the y over the hypotenuse of 75. So we'll multiply by 75 on both sides. So 75 times uh, the sine of 35, that's equal to 43.02 uh, feet. And so now we add the 15 feet to it, and that would be 58 uh, feet. From that's part that is D, what D equals. Okay, let me erase this other stuff that's in the way here. All right, now in order to get uh, part B, which is uh, B here, uh, we take 150 and we subtract both these X's, and that will give us that little distance there. So we got to find X. Let's not use what we found for Y just in case we made a mistake. Let's just use this corner, the adjacent leg, and the hypotenuse. So that's the cosine. So part B is the cosine of 35 degrees is equal to the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. So again, multiply by 75, and that'll tell us what x is. 75 times uh, the cosine of 35, that gives us x equal to 61.436. So multiply it by 2, and you get 122.9, and subtract that from 150, and you get 27.1 feet. That is what B equals. So those should be our answers, hopefully, um, for what we're trying to figure out. Length of a slide. So here we have um, a right triangle with 25 degrees at that corner. 
We have a right triangle here with 35 degrees, and we have the opposite leg being 15. The whole thing is 100. So uh, now the question is, let's figure out this hypotenuse here. And we do know this height, 15, that's what that says. So let's get that hypotenuse. And the only thing left will be this little portion right here. And we can figure those things out here in a minute. So let's get the two hypotenuses. So opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So the sine of 35 degrees, we'll do the upper right one, is equal to the opposite leg, 15, over the hypotenuse. Multiply by h and divide by the sine of 35. So take your calculator and figure that out. 15 divided by sine of 35 is 26.15, um, really. Let's just put 15 down because we're going to uh, round everything to the nearest foot, but I don't want to round most of it yet. Okay, now let's do the other h. So that was h1. We'll do h2 here. h2 is equal to the sine of 25, because that's the opposite leg, 15, over the hypotenuse. So again, multiply by h of 2, and we get, and we divide off the sine. So h of 2 equals 15 divided by the sine of 25. So on your calculator, that should give you 6.34. Let me do that again to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Divided by sine of 25. Okay, that makes sense. I didn't think that number sounded right. And I'm going to do it one more time to make sure I got it right. 15 divided by the sine of 25. And that's 35. Point four nine. That makes sense because the degree is smaller, so that hypotenuse should be longer than the other one. Okay, so we add those two together here in a minute, so I'm just going to circle them to remember we have to add those together. But here's the thing. How do we get this center, this center part here? Well, we need these bases. All right, so we're going to call this um, A and this one B. So now we're going to use this corner and go opposite leg over adjacent, and on this one we'll do opposite leg over adjacent. So they're both tangents. So the tangent of 25 is equal to the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. So multiply by A and divide off, and you get A equals 15 over the tangent of 25. So put in your calculator, and you get 32.17. Again, we're going to keep that because that's A. So we're still trying to find this piece here in a minute. I'll show you how to do it. And now we get B. So we're going to do the tangent of 35 equals 15 over B. Multiply by B and divide. So you get uh, 15 divided by the tangent of 35 on your calculator. And that is 21. So B is equal to 21.42. All right, so, so far, so good. Uh, we're not adding these together, not adding A and B. This is to help us figure out the center section here, okay? So if we take 100 minus those two added together, that'll give us that center section. So 100 minus 32.17 minus 21.42, and that is 46.41. That's the center section. Add the 26.15 and the 35.49, and that's the length of our slide. So plus 26.15, I miss hit the button, 46.41 plus 26.15 plus 35.49. And we get 108 uh, feet, around to the nearest foot, it says. Okay, so the, the harder ones take a little bit longer, but most of these are just real quick answers. All right, so now this shouldn't be too bad. Approximate the angle of elevation theta. So we're doing all this backwards. The sun, uh, alpha of the sun, if a person is 5 feet tall, casts a shadow 4 feet long. So here is your right triangle. All right, so 4, 5. The hypotenuse is not 3. It's not a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. That 3 and 4 have to be your bases. Um, all right, so what do we have from this corner? We have the opposite leg and the adjacent leg. That's tangent. So we're going to do tangent of alpha. We don't know. 
is equal to the opposite leg 5 over the adjacent leg. So to get theta by itself, we need to move the tangent onto the other side. So that's arc tangent or inverse tangent of 5 divided by 4 in your calculator. So take 5 divided by 4, make sure you know what that is. And now you're going to take the arc tangent of that value. And that's going to get you um, 51.3 degrees. That sounds about right. A builder wishes to construct a ramp 24 feet long, so that's your hypotenuse there. 5 feet tall, approximate the angle on the ramp, so we're doing this backwards. So we have the opposite leg and the hypotenuse, that would be the sine of alpha equals opposite leg over hypotenuse. So again, we need to move sine to the other side, so it's the arc sine, inverse sine of 5 24 So do that on your calculator, and you get 12 feet, okay, or I'm sorry, not 12 degrees, not feet, 12 degrees. Okay, now, in order to do this, I, I drew this uh, triangle over to the right here, I want you to understand something, D equals R times T. For both, for all these lengths, we want the distance of these lengths here, so the duck's moving at 7 centimeters per second. Okay, so that's your rate times your time. Okay, so that's your D. That And again, this is your opposite leg. And then you have your um, hypotenuse here. This is why we're going to use the sine function. So the opposite leg is the rate times the time, 7 centimeters per second. Now, I don't know how much time has passed, okay, but that's T. The same amount of time passes from when it opens and when you shoot. Okay, and then the hypotenuse is 25 centimeters per second. So if we put the opposite leg over the hypotenuse, the t's reduce out, and now we can solve for phi, which is the arc sine of 7 25ths. So we figured that out. 7 divided by 25, and we take the arc sine of that, and that gives us 16.3 degrees. Doesn't take long, but that's what the degree is before you shoot it. A conveyor belt 9 meters long can be hydraulically rotated up to an angle of 40 degrees. Okay, part A. Find the, to the nearest degree the angle through which the conveyor belt should be rotated up to reach a door that is 4 meters above the platform. Okay, so part A is the actual picture here. We don't know the degree yet, but we know the conveyor belt's 9 meters long, and it has to be up 4 meters, so the opposite leg and hypotenuse. So part A is going to be the sine of alpha equals the opposite leg over hypotenuse. So what is alpha? The arc sine of 4 ninths. So again, take your calculator and figure all that out, and alpha should be 26. Are we doing nearest degree? To the nearest degree. Okay, so 26 degrees. That's your nearest degree. Then part B says approximate the maximum height above the platform that the belt can reach. Well, it says it can only go 40 degrees. So part B here, it can only go up to 40 degrees, and the conveyor belt is only 9 meters. It doesn't change. So that's your hypotenuse. So it wants to know how high can it reach. All right, so what do we have here? Opposite and hypotenuse. So there you're going to do the sine of 40 equals the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. Multiply by 9, and you get your answer. 9 times the sine of 40 degrees, and that gives you 5.79 feet. Or, excuse me, this will be meters, uh, which is actually pretty, pretty big, times 3. That would be th almost uh, 17 feet. Pretty high. Tall structure. All right, so you got to convert this, so you got to take 24 divided by 60. Okay, so that gives you 21 degrees and 20.4 minutes, and then you got to take that divided by 60 to convert it into the decimal. So 20.4 minutes divided by 60 is, oops, 21.34 degrees total. So you have to, mul to multiply, eh, divide by 60, 
both times, but you had to do this first to get that decimal. All right, so now that we know the degree of this corner, it's asking, uh, from a distance one mile on level ground, its angle of elevation is this, determine its highest, its height to the nearest foot. All right, so you're one mile away, not feet, so that has to be converted to 5,280 feet. So now you can use the opposite leg and the adjacent leg. So this is the tangent of 21.34 degrees equal to the opposite leg over the adjacent. And everything's in the right degrees and units of feet. So multiply both sides by 5,280. So 5,280 times the tangent of 21.34 in your calculator. 21.34, tangent of that times 5,280, and we get 2,000. 62, and it should be 3, the nearest foot. So 2,063 feet is the height. Pretty tall structure. Okay, elongation here. So um, maximum elongation of Venus occurs when Earth is at its minimum distance, uh, D sub E, right, from the sun. So 91,000, 91,500,000 miles. And Venus is 68 million miles um, from the sun. All right. Approximate the maximum elongation theta of Venus. Okay. Assume that the orbit of Venus is circular. Okay. So if it's not circular, it changes everything. So th pretty much these are as uh, close to as circular as possible. Let's just solve for theta is what we're asking. Okay. All right. Now notice I said the elongation of the planet Venus is defined by the angle theta, and that's what this is asking. Approximate the maximum elongation of theta. Okay. Okay, so now what do we have? This is your 90 degree angle. Yes, I should use yellow here. This is your 90 degree angle right here. Because Earth is looking at Venus and it's perpendicular, so there you go. So what do we have from this corner? We have the opposite leg and the hypotenuse. So we're going to use the sine. The sine of theta is equal to the opposite leg, 68 million, divided by 91,500,000. So again, to get theta, you got to do the arc sine of those numbers. I'm not going to write them again, so put them in your calculator. So 68 million divided by 91,500,000. And so that's 0 0.743169. So we take the arc sine of that number and you get 48 degrees. All right, Pentagon's ground area. So there is a formula from geometry uh, where you can use the apothem, um, or you could just let me explain how you can do it without using that formula. So we have a pentagon shape here. And it says the Pentagon is the largest office building in the world in terms of ground area. The perimeter of the building has the shape of a regular Pentagon. That means all the angles are the same and all the lengths of the bases are the same. So each side length is 921 feet. Find the area enclosed by the perimeter of the building. Well, all you have to do and what they do in geometry is you find the area of just a, uh, a triangle. So we're going to find the area of this little triangle here. Okay. Or we can do the whole thing. I'll show you how to do that. So the area of a triangle, if you look over here, is one half base times height. Well, we have the base. We need to find the height. Well, there's not enough information here yet, but we can figure out what this angle is here. But this is not a right triangle. You have to use this half size triangle to get this angle to use Sokotoa. If it's not a right triangle, you can't use it. But first, let's get x, the whole angle. How do we figure that out? Well, all of these angles are the same. There's five of them, and all together, you can make a circle around it. These angles make a circle, 360 degrees in a circle. So 360 divided by five angles makes each of these 72. So x is 72 degrees. Divide it by 2 to get the little angle here. So that's 36 degrees here. And we can get, uh, we'll call this um, uh, base 1 here, because the big base is 921. So how do we get B 
and h. Well, we can get b sub 1 by dividing 921 by 2. 921 divided by 2 is 460.5. All right, so now we have the opposite leg. We want the adjacent leg. Okay, so the adjacent leg, how do we do this? This would be tangent. The tangent of 36 degrees is equal to the opposite leg, 460.5, over the hypotenuse, over the adjacent leg, h. This is why we shouldn't use h for uh, anything other than hypotenuse. Multiply by h on both sides. Divide by the tangent of 60, so the height of our small triangle is uh, 460.5 divided by the tangent of 36 degrees, and we get 633.8. <clears throat> okay, and this is feet. That's our H. So now we can figure out the area. We'll use our big base because we're going to do the big area of this triangle. Okay, so the big area would be the base, 921, one half the base, 921, times the height, which we just found, 633.8. So we'll take your calculator and multiply those together, divide it by 2. And so our area of the triangle there is 291,875.9 feet squared. These are how many square feet are in that little triangle. How many triangles are there in a pentagon? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So multiply that by 5. And that gives you the whole area of the footprint of the pentagon. 1,459,379.5 square feet. That's a lot of feet. Same thing that we're going to do here. Regular octagons inscribed in a circle of radius 12 centimeters. So the radius is 12. That's not our hypotenuse. Or excuse me, that's the hypotenuse. That's not the height of the triangle. Okay, so we're just going to come back down to the base here and look at the bottom triangle. This is our H. Okay, it wants the perimeter of the octagon. All right, so we have nothing to go on other than there's 360 degrees in a circle. We can get each of the eight uh, angles there. So 360 divided by 8 tells us that the whole angle here is 45. All right, well, that doesn't help us because that's not a right triangle. So we divide that by 2, and we get half of that to be 22.5 degrees. All right, so let's get B sub 1. That's the opposite leg, and we have the hypotenuse. So that's sine. The sine of 22.5 is equal to the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. So how do you get B sub 1? Multiply by 12. Take the calculator and take the sine of 22.5 times 12, and you get... 4.59. That is little b. Well, multiply it by 2 to get the whole length, and you get 9.18 centimeters. This is all centimeters here. It's centimeters. And how many do we have? We have one there, but there's eight distances around. Perimeter is the distance around, so multiply it by 8. So times 8, and you get 73.8 five centimeters. So these are all like little puzzles and you probably never thought of using a circle to help you get those angles, but that's how you do it. All right, 43. We got a box here. Now I have the bottom of the box at the top with H is your hypotenuse of the bottom of the box. So we have the side lengths. We can figure out um, what H is. We could use the Pythagorean theorem or we could use theta. Um, we have to find theta first. We can just use the, <laughs> let's just use Pythagorean theorem. It's just simpler, I guess. A squared plus 6 squared is equal to h squared. So 64 plus 36 is equal to h squared. That's 100. So the square root is uh, 10. So 10 is the base diagonal here. That's 10. So now that goes here. So I have this uh, upper part there. It's still four feet, four inches high. So now we can figure out theta. It wants the degree of that diagonal. So that's the opposite leg over the adjacent. That's tangent of theta is equal four over 10. So we're going to say theta is the arctangent 
of 4 divided by 10 on your calculator, or 0.4. So 0.4, take the arc tangent of that, and you get 21.8 degrees. 44, volume of a conical cup. Okay. So the volume of a, a cone is pi r squared times h. Uh, and you got to divide it by 3 because it's a cone. So the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times h. So when you're done, you got to divide it by 3. All right, so here's the thing. We don't know anything other than the radius. And once we find the radius, um, we can find h because we have the volume. The volume is 20. And then we have pi r squared times h over 3. That's the one-third part. And now we can find h because that's the only uh, value left. Once we find h, I took out this right triangle out and I put it right here inside the cone. Okay? It wants beta. And all we have here is alpha. If we multiply it by 2, that will be the whole, um, sorry about that, the whole degree of beta. So um, how do we do all this? First of all, let's find uh, h. So 3 times 20 is 60. I'm going to do it all over here, 60. So we have pi times 4 times h. So we're going to divide by 4 pi. Okay, 4 times 3.14, all right. So figure out what that is on your calculator. So 60 uh, divided by, and make sure you get the right answer here. 4 times, looking for my pi button. All right, so again, I'm going to make sure I do it right. 60 divided by, I'm going to use parentheses for 4 times pi. And that gives me h to be 4.77. All right, so 4.77 is h. Now I have enough information to find alpha. So 2 is the opposite leg. 4.77 is the adjacent leg. So again, that's tangent of alpha is equal to 2 over 4.77. So to get alpha, we have to take the arc tangent of 2 divided by 4.77. On your calculator, so 2 divided by 4.77, So take the arc tangent of that. And alpha is 22.75 degrees. Multiply it by 2 to get all of beta. So times 2, and we get 45.5 degrees. And it wants it to the nearest degree, so that's 46 degrees. Actually, it's 45.49, so technically it's just 40, 45 degrees. Okay. All right, let's move on. Degree of beta. Okay. Um, from point P level on the ground, uh, the angle of elevation of the top of a tower, elevation again, 26 degrees, 50 minutes. So 50 minutes is not 0.5. Divide that by 60. So take your calculator and take 60, uh, excuse me, 50 divided by 60, and you get 0.833. So this is 26.83 repeating degrees. Okay? So that's what goes right there. Now, <clears throat> from a point 25 meters closer to the tower and on the same line with P and the base of the tower, the angle of elevation is 53 and 30 minutes. So 30 divided by 60 is one half. So this is 53.5 degrees. And that goes in that position. Okay, approximate the height of the tower. The only way to do this is to make two equations. So I have two um, triangles here. So you have the big, the longer one with 26.83 degrees okay and again we only know that this length right here is 25 we don't know that all right <clears throat> and then we have the shorter one here at 53.5 degrees and that's your x 
And both H's are the same. And anytime you have that, then you come up with two equations, because you have two un you have two unknowns, X and H. Alright. The H's are the same, the X's are the same here. Okay. But we don't um we have too many variables, so you have to have two equations. Well, first of all, what do we have here? Opposite leg over the adjacent leg. The adjacent leg is the whole thing here, x plus 25. So what we now have, opposite over adjacent, is the tangent of 26.83 is equal to the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. Okay? On the one over here, again, opposite over adjacent. That's the tangent of 53.5 equal to the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. Okay, well, since H and X are really both the same, we have to, and I want to solve for H, we need to um, get H by itself, okay? So, technically, we could get X by itself, but it's going to be a little more complex. So, let's go ahead and solve for H by multiplying the X plus 25 as a group. Don't forget, it is a group, because whenever you figure out tangent 26.83, you have to distribute that through here and multiply by x over here. Okay, so now since both those h's are the same, then this h is equal to that h, so we can actually say x plus 25 times the tangent of 26.83 is also equal to x times the tangent of 53.8. So let's just get these decimals, because sometimes it's easier to look at these as decimals. And we'll take um, the tangent of 26.83, and that gives us x plus 25, and tangent of 26.83 is 0.5. All right, I'm just going to put it out in front. And now tangent of 53.8 is 1.37, so 1.37x. Now it looks like an algebra problem. So distribute here, we get 0.5x plus 12.5 equal to 1.37x. So we're going to uh, subtract the 0.5x and that gives us 0.87x is equal to 12.5. And we divide off the 0.87. So take 12.5 divided by 0.87 and we get 14.5 4 is equal to x. Okay, so what did it want? It wanted the height of the tower. So we need to know what h is again. So I'm just going to use this one over here. This seems easier. So x is 14.4 times the tangent of 53.8, and that's going to give us our height. So again, 53.8, take the tangent of that, and multiply it by 14.4. And the height of the tower is equal to 19.7. And this is in uh, meters. So 19.7 meters should be the answer. A ladder 20 feet long leans against a side of the building, and the angle between the ladder and the building is 22 degrees. So I got this 22 in the wrong spot. This should be 22 degrees up here. Okay. So now it wants part A wants to know how far away the base is from the building. So we want the opposite leg. We don't want to use the height yet. We're going to get that in a minute. And the hypotenuse is given. So opposite and uh, hypotenuse is a sine. So part A is the sine of 22 degrees is equal to the opposite leg over hypotenuse. So 20 times the sine of 22 gives us uh, 7.5 feet. So that sounds about right. And then now we want to get H. Let's use the adjacent leg and the hypotenuse. So that's cosine. So the cosine of 22 is the adjacent leg H over hypotenuse. So 20 times the cosine of 22. That gives us, uh, we'll call this H sub 1, 18.54 feet. Now part B, we're kind of going to do the same thing. Since we have A, the, the ladder has uh, been pulled out three feet. So A has increased three feet. So A in part B is going to be uh, 10.5 feet. So this is 10.5 feet. We don't know what alpha is here. Okay. 
and we'll call this h sub 2. And the ladder is still 20 feet long. So we can't find h sub 2 yet, so we need to find alpha. We need to get this degree. So we're, let's use our 10.5, the adjacent leg, and the hypotenuse. So that's cosine of alpha is equal to the adjacent leg, 10.5, divided by the hypotenuse. So alpha is going to be the arc cosine of 10.5 divided by 20 on your calculator, and that gives us 58.3 degrees. Now that we have our alpha, our degree, we can get the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. So that's the sine of 58.3 is the opposite leg, h sub 2, over 20. So we take 20 times 58.3, the sine of 58.3, and that's 17. H sub 2 is 17.0 feet. So how much did it go down? So you subtract those. So 18.54 minus 17.0, and you get 1.54 feet. Dropped one and a half feet. Now, the balloon, um, we're looking at it, and uh, you're 110 kilometers away, <clears throat> and you're looking at it with an elevation of 19 degrees in 20 minutes. So divide that by 60, that's 2 six or 1 third, so 19.3 repeating degrees. Okay? And then... Um, and then it's measured uh, from the same point, 110 kilometers away, and that degree is 31 point five, not point five, 31 degrees in 50 minutes. So we divide 50 minutes by 60. Again, 50 minutes is not 0.5. So 50 uh, divided by 60 is 0.83. So this is 31.83 repeating degrees. All right. So now what it wants is approximately how far does the balloon rise? Um, during that period. So we have two different values here. Um, we have our first value. Let's get our H. Let's, again, let's call it the right thing. We'll call it Y. All right, let's get that. So to get Y, we take the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. So tangent. So the tangent of 19.3 degrees is equal to Y over 110. So 110 times the tangent of 19.3 degrees, and we get uh, this height to be 38.5 uh, kilometers. So multiply by 110. So tangent of 19.3 is 0 0.35019 times 110. Okay, 38.5. Let's just check in again. All right, 38.5 kilometers, that's like really high. All right, well, let's do the next uh, next part. So uh, it's measured again with a degree. You're still 110 kilometers from the base of it. So now what is our new, the total, total thing, we'll call this uh, y sub 2, okay? So you're going to do opposite over adjacent again. So the tangent of 31.83 degrees is equal to y sub 2 over 110. So again, multiply by 110 on both sides. So 31.83 degrees, tangent of that is 0 0.62075 times 110. And your new altitude is 68.28 kilometers. Okay, so it wants to know uh, how much it has risen. Okay, so we take the whole thing this whole distance, y sub 2 minus y sub 1. And that gives us this little distance right here. y sub 2 minus y sub 1 is this distance, how much it has risen. So 68.28 is going to be uh, minus, excuse me, 38.5. 29.8 kilometers is the dis difference of how much it has risen. The reason I'm questioning this information <laughs> is 68 kilometers is 42 miles. Um, and I'm still second guessing this. 
let's move on to the next problem. Okay, height of a building. You're not at the base or on the ground here. You're 8.2 meters above the ground. And the angle from here to the top of the building is 31 degrees 20 minutes, or let me just draw this a little bit better here, 31.3 repeating degrees. And we'll call this Y. And then uh, we're gonna draw this one as a separate triangle. You have 12 degree depression in 50 minutes. So um, you're going to do uh, 50 divided by 60 again, or five divided by six is 8, uh, 0.83 repeating. So this is gonna be 12.83 degrees, okay? And this distance is 8.2 meters because you're, you're right here, you're 8.2 meters above the ground. So that's the same as what it is over here. So we have this right triangle. So approximate the height of the building. All right, so we need to add 8.2 plus y. So we got to find y. But the first first thing we need to do is we can't do anything in the top triangle. We don't have enough information. But we can find this little leg right here. Because this is your adjacent leg and you have the opposite leg. You can figure out that part. And if we have a, then we can figure out y. Okay, so now let's get a in the bottom triangle. You have the opposite leg and adjacent leg. That's tangent. So the tangent of 12.83 repeating degrees is equal to the opposite leg, 8.2 over A. So multiply by A and divide by the tangent. So 8.2 divided by the tangent of 12.83 uh, is 36.0 meters. Okay, so now that we have that, we can do the top triangle. Uh, and that's going to be the tangent of 31.3 degrees equals the opposite leg over 36. Multiply by 36, and we have our answer. So tangent of 31.3 degrees, 0 0.6080, um, times 36, and that's going to give us our y value of 21.9 meters. Add that to our 8.2, and we get 30 meter is your height, that's your height of the building. Okay, <clears throat> a space lab circles Earth at an altitude of 380 miles. Okay, so that's this little part right here, 380 miles above the surface of the Earth. When an astronaut views the horizon of Earth, so when it sees this little point right here, that's actually perpendicular with the radius. Okay, the angle theta, Shown in the figure is 65.8 degrees. Use this information to estimate the radius. Okay, so what we have here is the radius, which is the same as this radius, radii are all the same, and then plus the six, I'm sorry, plus the 380 miles there. That's the hypotenuse. So from this angle, we have the opposite leg and the hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse is the sine. So the sine of 65.8 degrees is equal to the opposite leg, r, over the hypotenuse, which is r plus 380. Okay, so we just have two places where there's r's, but we don't have two, excuse me, I should say and, we, we have one variable, not two. So that's, we can solve this, All right? So multiply both sides, and this is a group again, by r plus 380. So those will cancel out and r plus 380 here. So what's the sine of 65.8? That's 0.91212. So 0.91212 times r plus 380. And that equals r. So distribute here. So 0.91212 r plus 0.91212 times 380 is 346 Point six. I'm going to make sure that's right. 0 0.91212 times 380, 346.6. And again, that's still equal to r. So we're going to move this r over. That's one r on the right side. So 1 minus 0 0.91212 is 0 
0.88R, and we still have 346.6 on the left. So divide by 0 0.08788. And that will give us our radius. So 346.6 divided by 0 0.08788. 3,944 miles. That's very, very close to what um, the radius is. I think it's 3,952 miles. But again, we can't dig to the center of the Earth. We can use things that we have uh, to help us figure things out that we can't get to. So math does that. 50, length of the antenna. A CB antenna is located on top of the garage that is 16 feet tall. From a point on level ground that is 100 feet away. Okay, from a point directly below the antenna. The antenna subtends an angle of 12 degrees. As shown in the figure, approximate the length of the antenna. All right, so we gotta get X. So we have a big triangle. If we can get alpha, which we use this bottom triangle here, this is 16 and this is 100, we can get alpha. That's the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. So tangent of alpha is equal to 16 over 100. If we can get alpha, we can add it to 12 to do the bigger triangle. Okay, this is still 100. And then this is x plus 16. All right, so now, uh, to get alpha, move the tangent over. So the arc tangent of 16 over 100. So 16 hundredths or 0.16. So the arc tangent of 0.16 is going to give you 9.09 .09 degrees. All right, so we add that to 12 degrees, okay, and we get 20. We'll just say it's 21 degrees. The whole thing is 21 degrees. So now, how do we get? x. So opposite over adjacent. So tangent. Uh, we'll keep it as 21.09 degrees for now to keep it a little more accurate. The opposite leg over 100. Multiply both sides by 100 to get x plus 16 by itself. So the arc tangent, not the arc tangent, I'm sorry, the tangent of 21.09 times 100 equals 38.567, and this is in feet. So we subtract 16 from it, and that's going to give us the antenna height. Minus 16 equals 22 point, we, it doesn't say the nearest foot, so 22.6 feet tall. All right, 51, speed of an airplane. Uh, remember, distance equals rate times time. I'm talking about speed. An airplane flying at an altitude of 10,000 feet passes directly over a fixed object. So right now, here's the airplane over this object. One minute later, so one minute has passed. The airplane is now right here. has an angle of depression, depression going down, of 42 degrees. All right. Approximate the speed of the airplane to the nearest mile per hour. Okay, so here's the plane. Here's a new right triangle here, 10,000 feet. If that's 42, then alternate interior angles. This is 42 degrees. How do we get this distance? We need to know how far the plane has flown on the ground to figure out the miles per hour. So we need this distance. So we'll call this A here. So we have the opposite leg, and we want the adjacent leg. That's tangent. We use tangent a lot. Tangent of 42 degrees is equal to 10,000 over A. All right, multiply by A on both sides and then divide by the 42. So A equals 10,000 divided by the tangent of 42 degrees. All right, so use your calculator, 10,000 divided by the tangent of 42 degrees. That is 11,106. All right, so the, this is feet. So 11,106 feet. That's how far it's gone. Now, how fast is that? So again, let's use our um, uh, change rates here. So 11,106 over, um, this is feet, in one minute. That's how far it's gone. 
All right, so we need to change feet and minutes. So first of all, we can change feet into miles. So there's 5,280 feet in one mile. So we want feet on the bottom so that they cancel out. So 5,280 feet and one mile goes on top. So now we have the correct miles on top. Now we need hours on the bottom. So we need to remove the minutes. So minutes is going to go on top and hour on the bottom. So the minutes will cancel out. So that's 60 minutes in one hour. So now that we have our miles per hour, we multiply straight across on the top and the bottom. And that will give us our miles uh, per how many hours we have here. So 5,280 hours is what that is on the bottom. On the top, you have 11,106 times 60. That gives us 666,360 miles in 5,280 hours. So we divide it by 5,280, and that gives us the, um, the total uh, amount of 126 miles per one hour, miles per hour. Okay, the height of a mountain. Motors traveling along a level highway at a speed of 60 kilometers an hour. That is one kilometer a minute. So I changed it to minutes because we're going to be changing here. Toward a mountain, observing that between 1 o'clock and 1.10. That's 10 minutes later. So 10 minutes, they take another reading. So we're right here. We started here. 10 minutes later, we're here. So that's 10 kilometers. One minute is one kilometer. So that's our distance now we have for that part. We don't know the next distance to the mountain. That's x. The angle of elevation to the top of the mountain at that point is 70 degrees. Started at 10 and now it's 70. Now we need the height of the mountain. So the height of the mountain in both triangles is the same. So we're going to set up two equations and two unknowns because we have x and an h. So let me rewrite this we have the big triangle here at 10 degrees okay and this is h and this is 10 plus x kilometers and then we have a taller uh, triangle this is still h there's they're the same okay this is 70 degrees and this is x so the only way to solve this is to set up two equations so from this corner we have the opposite leg and the adjacent so move this up. This is tangent of 10 degrees, opposite over adjacent. And on the right one, we have the tangent of 70 degrees is opposite over adjacent. So let's solve both of these for h by multiplying by this group here, just like we did on that other problem. Multiply by x here. So on the left-hand side, we have the tangent of 10 degrees, which is going to be a number that we're going to distribute through the 10 plus x. That's h. And on the right-hand side, we have h equals um, the tangent of 70 degrees times x. All right, so what are these values? The tangent of 10 degrees is 0 0.176, 0.176327, and we're going to distribute that through here. And we get uh, 1.76327 um, plus 0.176327x. And these two h's are the same, so we're going to set the expressions equal to each other. Tangent of 70 degrees is 2.7475x. So we're going to subtract the 0.176327x. Um, okay, so minus point. 176377 and we get 2.5711x equals the 1.76327. So now we divide off the 2.5711 and that tells us what x is. So 1.76327 divided by 2.5711. So x is 0.6858. <clears throat> so if that's x, we now can find the height of the mountain. So 0.6858. So we can use this formula right here. h is equal to 
0.6858 times the tangent of 70. So times the tangent of 70, and that gives us the height of 1.88 kilometers. Okay, so 1.88 kilometers, just to put this in perspective, uh, I'll change this over to um, units here. Our kilometers are 1.8. That would be 1.11, 1.12 miles high. Okay, so that makes sense. The, um, the mountain is, you know, 6,000 feet high. All right, so that is the end of um, those story problems that I wanted you to do. So good job. Okay, I'm 53. Um, uh, A is the altitude, okay, of 22,300. So the satellite circles the Earth at an altitude of 22,300. But that doesn't include the radius. So this, this is the radius. The 22,300 is from the surface of the Earth to um, the satellite. So you got to add 4,000 to that part of it. Now this is 90 degrees over here because it's the horizon from this point of view, which is going to be 90 degrees to the center of the Earth. So there's your 90 degree angle. If we can figure out theta, then we can figure out on the Earth... So this is theta here. We can figure out, double it, what this degree is. And then we can figure out what percentage of the Earth's surface is being um, viewed. Okay? So let's find theta. Well, this would be the adjacent leg to the hypotenuse. So that's cosine of theta is equal to 4,000 divided by 26,300 or theta is the arc cosine of 4,000 divided by 26,300, 0.15209. So the arc cosine of that, and that gives us theta equal to 81.3 degrees. Multiply it by 2, and so this whole angle here is 162.5 degrees. So what percentage of the circle is that. So of the whole Earth, I know it says the percentage of the equator, but of the whole Earth, two-dimensionally, this is 360 degrees. If we take 162 divided by, or 0 0.5 divided by 360, that'll give you a percentage of how much of this arc is being used. So that's 45% of the arc, okay? If you wanted the whole uh, understand what surface area is. Surface area of a sphere is uh, 4 pi r squared. So the area of a circle times 4. So 4,000 times pi times 4. Oops, I'm sorry, 4,000 squared. So we got to do 4,000 uh, times 4,000. Oops. Okay. And then you take that times pi times 4. And you get a surface area of the whole Earth to be 201,061,929.8. And this is going to be square miles. All right. It's not hyper accurate because I think the radius is 3,956 miles. So it's not exact, but we're pretty close. That's a lot of square miles. Now that's the surface. All right, so how much of the surface is actually uh, being hit? Okay, so if we just take 45% of that, that's going to give us a pretty good clue. So times 0.45. And we're looking at 90,477,868.4 square miles is going to be affected by that satellite. And then it goes on to talk about the other things and why they overlap down here. They're overlapping. If you're at 162 degrees uh, and you have it three different places, uh, three times 162 is going to be 486 degrees. So not 360. So you're overlapping all over the place. 